Kelly Clifton joining me today, our Laker insider Mike Bresnahan, and Fox Sports national NBA reporter. Such a title, Melissa wow. Rowland. Melissa, <laughs> good to see you. <laughs> Great to see you too. It sounds especially good when you say it. God, she is so kind. Melissa has like the most important <laughs> job of anyone who comes on our show. I'm so proud of her. Yeah, she's the one dishing out all the compliments and kindness. <laughs> right. No, 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 no that's deal. how you should live life. Yeah. <laughs> Good to see the both of you. Yeah. Let's get the show started. The Lakers had a rough fourth quarter, as we know, against the Pacers on the way to their fourth loss in five games. They gave up 35 points in the quarter, allowing Indiana to shoot nearly 60% from the field. Hmm. I don't think we played poorly tonight. Um, I think in the fourth quarter, uh, a guy got hot and exploited our game plan, which can happen. You know, uh, you can play great defense and a guy gets hot and he and cares, and he just uh, took that fourth quarter over. You know, cl a close game. Russ ended it on the bench. I was curious if you just had a re reaction to to that. I don't think we've seen that in a close game this year. And um, how was Russ after the game? Did, is that the sort of thing that bothers him? The um. <laughs> have you followed Russ throughout his career? <laughs> Not as closely as you have, probably. Okay. Have you followed Russ throughout this season? Yeah. yeah. Uh, would you think that would bother Russ not being in a late game? I would imagine. Okay. Great answer. Yeah, very frustrating, you know, but it's a long season and, uh, you know, we believe in our group, but this is, this is definitely a disappointing loss. You know, Indy is a, a team sub-500 that uh, on our home court, you know, we, f we feel like we should win. Um, everyone. Frank, you... Um opted to go uh, with Russ on the bench at the end of the game. What were you what, 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 were, what were you looking for there? What was the thinking behind that behind that choice? Yeah, playing the guys I thought were going to win the game. Now, Dave McMenamin of ESPN with this on Russ's benching in the fourth. Frank Vogel's decision to bench Russell Westbrook was sanctioned by Lakers management, sources told ESPN. With the team teetering around 500 at the midway point, the staff in essence was told, you got to do what you've got to do with Westbrook. Melissa, I'm going to start with you. When it comes to Westbrook, the struggles, because obviously that's what everyone is talking about right now, Vogel mentioning that he played who he thought was going to win the game. How would you describe this situation? Tension, would you say, maybe? Tension is an understatement. Here's a guy who's making $44 million a year and who's already extremely sensitive. I mean, we're talking about the type of guy who, when we ask him a question he doesn't like, he gives a one-word response. And I mean, like, for 10 straight questions. This guy is very sensitive. So I can't imagine that there's any coming back between him and Frank Vogel after he was benched for the last four minutes of the game. It was a close game, a seven-point game. Uh, he made it very clear, and also the Lakers brass made it very clear that they don't have a lot of trust in him right now. And obviously, Russ was hurt. DJ had to keep him from going to the locker room. So it's interesting because they all got on the plane together today. I would not want to be on that plane ride, Ali. <laughs> yeah, you know, Melissa, no doubt about it. These are tough times for the Lakers. The thing that I keep going back to is th this night started out as a night to talk about Frank Vogel's job security, according to the media during the pregame. He faced seven questions about how comfortable he's feeling in his job right now. And then the game happened. And, and then you had the Lakers losing to a team that hadn't won a road game in two months, to a team that was 13th in the East. And then, oh, yeah, Russ checked out with 352 left and did not come back into the game. So it's kind of like the, these circles kept proliferating, getting bigger and bigger and bigger with more uh, newsy type things, more what, what next type of things. And here we are with Russ. What will happen? That, that's anyone's guess. We'll, we'll find out on, uh, on, fr on uh, Friday, right, against Orlando, since he did not speak to reporters uh, after last night's game. You guys all have very fair points. Obviously, we are the media. We are here to do a job. I think yeah. what we all know as well is that it has been nothing short of an adjustment for Russell Westbrook since putting sure. on a Lakers uniform, and he has talked about that at length. When it comes to how he handles this now moving forward, Melissa, because as we know, he did not speak to reporters yeah. last night. Um, how do you think he handles this? Do you think these struggles continue for Russ? Do you think it'll be something that he speaks about to try to put to rest? As we've seen a couple other times this season, he's tried to take back and control that narrative. What do you see his next move being? You know, I think he's going to be hurt, and I think the Lakers made a really big statement by doing this. They said, we don't care how big of a superstar you are. If you're going to be inconsistent with your shot, if you're going to be turning the ball over, if you're going to be playing subpar, if we can't count on you, you're going to be sitting on the bench. Nobody is above reproach. 
Yeah, Melissa, Allie, there's no doubt about this. I mean, it's not like he was, you know, 10 for 12 when he was benched with uh, 12 assists and, and one turnover. No, he was 5 for 17. And I saw this happen almost a decade ago with Pau Gasol. Mike D'Antoni started benching him in key parts of the fourth quarter. How did it go over with Pau, one of the true gentlemen of the game? Not well. Mm -hmm. So this is not the first time the Lakers have dealt with a situation like this. And I imagine Russ, who, you know, LeBron had to kind of speak on his behalf. We, we got that uh, kind of uh, suggestive, well, how do you think he would feel about this? Uh, and you got Frank Vogel also saying pretty definitively, pretty authoritatively, I went with guys who I thought could win the game. So until we hear from Russ, we're not quite sure what he's going to be feeling, but there's definitely an educated guess that he's probably not too happy right now. Yeah, well, so we're not here to uh, speak for Russ by Can't any means, it. but I think at the end of the day, one thing we all do understand is that this is a business. And I think Carmelo Anthony said it best last night, saying this isn't personal between Frank and Russ. Mm -hmm. This is now just upon us to help Russ adjust to something that he's never experienced before. So obviously we will see how that True. all unfolds. Uh, because when it comes to the team as a whole, guys, they've had a lot of tough losses. Oklahoma City, Minnesota, Sacramento, Denver, Indiana, the latest obviously coming just last night. Yeah. What was uh, your take in terms of maybe the most disappointing one last night, Melissa? I actually think last night was the most disappointing loss just because of what was at stake. A man's job was at stake and it was so clear as Brez pointed out, Frank Vogel enters the media room and he's immediately asked seven questions about his job security. I mean, imagine Ali if you didn't know if you were going to keep your job and then you had to sit on a podium and talk to 10 reporters and, you know, countless more on national television and discuss how it felt to potentially lose your job. So it was very painful to watch. And with such a game with such high stakes against a Pacers team that's in the cellar of the league, this should have been a gimme game for the Lakers. This should have been an easy win. And the fact that they lost that game, I think everybody was waiting for the shoe to drop on Frank. Everybody thought that he was going to be let go last night. Obviously, that was not the case. He traveled to Orlando with the Lakers. But it was just such a game with such high stakes. So I think that was the worst loss of the season. Yeah, Allie, don't forget uh, in the rundown of the teams they've lost to, they've lost to Sacramento twice and OKC twice. So there's, there's at least a half dozen. Whoa. I didn't want to remind anyone of yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. You know, just uh, cleaning up a little <laughs> bit, I guess. Yeah, Mine's exactly. <laughs> there's, there's been too many what is going on here losses. You know, we, we've no longer, uh, we're no longer using the phrase winnable games. We had to junk that about a month or two ago. Um, m my worst loss would be the Denver game uh, a few days ago. You know, you go in there, uh, you lose by 37 points. I mean, that's just not tenable. And, and LeBron did not speak after the game. Uh, really one of the most disappointing Laker loss losses I've ever seen. Um, there's really, you know, there's no doubt that Frank Fogel was probably thinking what more could go wrong. And then The Athletic wrote that story two days later that his job's in jeopardy. So actually more can go wrong. The question is, will uh, more go wrong the rest of the way? Or is this the bottom point? Is this no, there's no more turning a corner. It's, is this the bottom right now? Well, let's keep our attention there and move on to Frank. As you guys mentioned, Chris Haynes with some news surrounding head coach Frank Vogel. The latest Los Angeles Lakers will not be making a personnel move at this juncture. And Frank Vogel will travel with the team tomorrow to coach in Orlando on Friday. League sources tell Yahoo Sports. Now here's Frank Vogel talking about the rumors surrounding his job status. Frank, what, if any, um, feedback have you received about your job performance over the last week or so? About my job performance? None. I mean, we, uh, you know, I meet with uh, our front office um, and talk about the last, you know, the previous night's game, um, every game all year. It's been that way for three years, and uh, it's not been different this week or of, of late. Uh, I don't feel like I'm under siege. Uh, it's not hard to do my job. I, you know, I'm very focused on the task at hand. I've always been that way, and um, you know, uh, it's really not up to me whether it's fair or not. Uh, it comes with the territory. You know, it comes with being the Lakers coach. We have high expectations. This fan base really cares. It's a big market, and um, you know, I wouldn't want it any way, any other way. To be honest with you, you know, I want people to care. I want people to want the best, and uh, you know, to command excellence of our group. You know, that's what we command among, of ourselves. So um, that's the way it is. In the last day or two, has there been, um, you know, affirmations from colleagues or former players, or have you received any sort of messages of support? Yeah, but I'll keep those private. <laughs> Does that mean something at this juncture with where this team is to you? It's really something I'm blocking out. 
honestly, like, you know, people can text me, and I, I appreciate supportive texts, but, you know, I feel good about what we're doing with our team and um, don't feel good always about the results. But um, you know, I believe in what we can do this year, you know, so I'm steadfastly uh, remaining focused on the task at hand. Hey Frank, how would you characterize what the collaboration has been like with the front office pertaining to both big people? I have a great work, work, working relationship where we're trying to figure things out together. And um, you know, we won a championship this way and I uh, feel good about our process. You led the team to a championship and what was potentially the hardest season on record, you know, a pandemic, Kobe's death. Um, is it surprising that all the noise that's out there right now is out there? No, I don't pay attention to whether it's surprising or not. It, you know, in this business and with this team, you know, if you're not winning at a super high level, you know, this is, uh, you know, you're going to get this type of noise. So, you know, I'm good at blocking it out. Uh, feel good about the job that we're doing. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, obviously we believe the results are going to come, you know, but you're going to have, over course, an 82-game season with a new group. You're going to have some, some ugly nights. That, I believe, is what you were referring to, Melissa, moments ago when you said he was asked about seven straight questions uh, before he had to go out and try to lead his team to a victory. It's not an easy position for Frank. I give him a standing ovation for being professional, as sure. he always has been and always is in this business as a head coach, uh, for handling those tough questions. With that said, kudos to you as well, Melissa, because you have to ask the tough questions. But right now, do you feel like uh, there's a situation or a circumstance where the Lakers do make a change at some point regarding Frank Vogel? It feels inevitable. Um, something's got to give, right? Here's a team that entered the season with championship aspirations, and now they're one game beneath 500 past the halfway mark. I mean, this is unacceptable for the Lakers, especially a Lakers team with four Hall of Famers. So something's going to need to be done. And I don't think this is necessarily Frank's fault. Um, I think a lot of the best defenders were taken off of the team and obviously he's a defensive minded coach so he's in a really tough position but that being said uh, the Lakers are going to need to do something and they're not going to get rid of one of their top superstars I don't think so that leaves Frank as the scapegoat um, so it feels like his days are numbered and that must be an incredibly hard position to be in because right now the Lakers don't have it together so Unless something really changes for the Lakers, I don't think things are looking very good for Frank right now. With that said, Brez, what would that even look like? Well, I'm hearing that Rob Plinka, you know, the president uh, of the Lakers uh, basketball operations, he will be there on this road trip. He will mm. be there in Orlando and then Miami and Brooklyn and on and on and on. Now, GMs and presidents do t this type of thing throughout the season. They'll go on road trips here and there. But it makes uh, a lot of sense, especially right now, that he will be there on, on this trip, kind of monitoring how the thing, how the, how the coaching thing is going, if he needs to step in and maybe make a move. Uh, so six games, it's going to be almost a two-week trip that uh, Rob will be out there with the team, and uh, we'll have to see what happens. Uh, if a move is made, the easy fix is always for any team to promote an assistant coach. You know, David Fisdale already has uh, almost a half dozen games coaching the Lakers while Frank was out because of the health and safety protocols. Great start by the both of you. If you guys are wondering how this has impacted anyone inside the organization, even those who haven't put on a uniform just yet, check this out. Kendrick Nunn tweeting this. Lake Show, I promise I want to be out there helping my team. Stay patient with me. This process has been just as frustrating for me. I'll return, return as soon as I'm Take a look at the road ahead for the Lake Show. It's not easy. Lakers' longest trip of the season, six games, ten days against some of the heavy hitters in the East. 10 a.m. Atlanta. Brez? Ready for that pregame show? Not there yet. <laughs> Time for win-loss predictions. Melissa, we're going to start with you ladies first. Win-loss for Orlando. Allie, they better be Orlando or we're all about to be fired. This is a team that's literally won only eight games all season long. They have the worst record in the NBA. If the Lakers can't pull this one off, everybody's going to be traded. The entire thing is about to be blown up. That means you and me, Bryce, as yeah, well. Yeah, I think we'll be traded uh, to Orlando for a uh, second-round pick. Uh, yeah, this has to be a Lakers win. This Orlando team is not good. They're young. They're beat up. There's no sign of Jonathan Isaac coming back anytime soon for them. He's missed almost two years, a promising young guy. This team's going to lose about 70 games. Maybe they get lucky and only lose about 65. Not a good team. Their partner's in the same state, but complete opposite stories. Melissa, the Miami Heat, win or loss? I think the Lakers are still going to lose to the Heat, even though Tyler Hero is in health and safety protocols and might still be when they play. Uh, Hero has been such an important part of that team. But that being said, this Heat team is so strong. They're one of the top teams in the Eastern Conference, and I just don't think the Lakers can compete right now.
Jimmy Buckets. Yeah. Uh, Lowry. Yeah. And oh uh, yeah, that big guy. Yeah, Bam is back. <laughs> um, look at him go coast to coast. Not a lot of uh, big men can do what he does. He's missed uh, quite a quite a long time. Jimmy Butler also in and out of the lineup this season. Why do I know this? I have him not on one, but both of my fantasy teams. It's been killing me a little bit, but he is back now. And uh, this Miami team is very strong. One of the top teams in the East. Jimmy. Nobody Probably cares about fantasy for us. Certainly not my team. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to the Brooklyn Nets, no Kevin Durant, no Kyrie Irving because it's a home game. Melissa, win or loss? Lakers are going to win this game, and that's because when the lights are the brightest and as they are in New York, the Lakers actually step up and play well. We saw that against the Utah Jazz. They struggle against the worst teams. Those are sort of the trick games for them, but I can see the Lakers pulling this off, especially no KD, no Kyrie, as you mentioned. I think the Lakers will win this game. They'll put in the effort. Yeah, I'm with you, Melissa. This feels like a Laker W. Uh, I think Russ might have a breakthrough game here, maybe going up against his old teammate, James Harden. Also, keep in mind the Lakers, if they look at this tape, you'll see a lot of Patty Mills, the guy we just showed there, scoring a lot of points when they first met out here at uh, now Crypto.com Arena. Uh, a lot of people's <laughs> front runner for league MVP just dropped a 50 ball. Mm -hmm. Win or loss against the Sixers, Melissa? Lakers are going to lose to the Sixers. Um, as, as you mentioned, Embiid is just playing MVP caliber basketball right now. The Lakers defense is incredibly porous. I believe they're 18th in the league in defense. I don't think they're going to have an answer for him. Lissa, uh, it's like we read each other's notes. I'm with you on this one as well. Um, <laughs> don't even need Ben Simmons. This team is still doing some, some pretty big damage. Uh, Tyrese Maxey, maybe he gets a little most improved player buzz, a second-year player, having a very good uh, first half of the season. Can't forget Tobias Harris as well. This team is deep. This team is good. Even though the fans always boo the Lakers when Kobe was playing, I still think they're going to beat them this time. All right, near the bottom of the East, but still in playoff situations, if you will. So bottom as in not top eight or top eight. Uh, Lakers versus Hornets, Melissa. I think the Lakers are going to pull this one off. Even though LaMelo looks really good, Miles Bridges looks really good, but I think the Lakers are going to get up for this game, and I think they're going to be able to pull it off. Finally, we have some differentiation. Allie, I know you're really? excited about this. I'm actually taking a Laker loss here. This is exactly the type of team the Lakers do not like play against. It is a young team. It is an up-tempo team. Relentless guards, uh, guards, excuse me, attacking you at all times. Uh, also, a back-to-back -back situation. And by the way, the Lakers just historically do not do well in Charlotte. Even the Kobe and Powell teams were always losing to guys like Gerald Wallace, <laughs> Stephen Jackson. Believe me, I was there for uh, far too many of those. Wow. All yeah. right. Last game of the road trip in Atlanta, Melissa. Hawks or Lakers? Who do you got? I think the Lakers are going to lose this game, and that's because the Hawks actually have the second best offense in the NBA. Even though their record doesn't really reflect it, they've been struggling, but the Lakers' defense has just been so bad as of late. Are they really going to be able to compete against the second best offense? I don't know. I don't think so. Bruce? I actually have them winning this one. Um, I don't think they want to come back with a two and four mark on this trip. They'd be two and three, according to my notes as of this point. Uh, you know, uh, Atlanta's had some guys in and out of the lineup. Clint Capella uh, certainly has been out the last uh, week, week and a half. Uh, sprained ankle. Who knows who's playing for this team? I didn't give a moment. I, I like the Lakers in this one. You guys are going 500, both of you. Green right green. on par with yep. the Lakers.